Fresh off the March for Our Lives, the New Jersey Assembly has passed not one gun control law or two, but six all in one day, which is, I think objectively, a lot of movement on one policy. Now, look, New Jersey is an area that has fairly strong gun laws, especially in comparison to some parts of the country. So in some ways, this just a little bit strengthens it or opens up new areas where they're going to do some gun control. And of course, gun control ad or gun rights advocates in New Jersey are saying that this is traitorous and all that. Um, but I want to talk about all six of these, at least briefly, because it's progress. And uh, we need to highlight the areas where progress needs to happen. But we can't just forget when we're succeeding. I think people are too worried about, it's like a, a sort of superstitious thing where we don't want to like jinx it or something. Mm -hmm. um, or we think that if we talk about the good things, then we're not doing enough to acknowledge the bad things. But this is progress, and so I want to I want to break these down. Before you jump in, I'll, I'll explain why I think people are worried. It's because in the past, whenever there's a little bit of progress on a difficult political issue, people get complacent. So I think, mm. I think there's a worry about complacency, which we have seen in the past when it comes to gun violence and, and mm. gun legislation. But I agree with you in that it's important to celebrate some of the victories that we're seeing across the country with gun control. Mm. And um, New Jersey has in the past attempted to pass similar measures. Yeah. And unfortunately, they were unable to do so because Chris Christie was their governor. Exactly. Now, Phil Murphy, a Democrat, is the governor, and he pl intends on signing this legislation into law. Exactly, so. yeah. Yeah, and I would say, look, I, I mean, when I was in grad school, it was for political psychology. So I think your concern is very justified. But I think at the same time, we can worry about um, complacency. We can mm -hmm. also worry about apathy, which could result from not thinking that anything is happening. Absolutely. So we need to deal with both of those. So now let's jump into uh, the bills. We're going to talk about each of these. Feel free to jump in if you want to comment. Um, two bills would make it easier to seize guns from certain owners, uh, like if they're a member of the NRA. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's the conspiracy theory, but no. Uh, one uh, passed 62 to 7 with seven abstentions, so very popular, would require law enforcement to seize firearms from those who mental health professionals determine are, quote, likely to engage in conduct that poses a threat of serious harm to the patient or another person. That seems incredibly reasonable. Seems like it would have already been the law in many places. Uh, the other bill would allow a police officer, family member, or household uh, member of a gun owner who, quote, poses a significant danger of bodily injury to self or others to file a petition with law enforcement or state superior court for a tempor temporary extreme risk protective order allowing authorities to seize the weapon. And then there would be a very short horizon for how long they have to bring it into court and talk about it before they can get their gun back. But it could allow them to stop something from happening. So I, I think that that part of their gun control uh, legislation is the most important because a, a common misunderstanding that people had in regard to the Parkland, Florida shooter was that the police and the school administration had absolutely no power to take any weaponry mm -hmm. away from that student, none whatsoever. Um, he would have to go through a very lengthy court uh, situation and you know no one can come in and unilaterally take someone's gun away even if that person poses an imminent threat. Yeah. There needs to be uh, laws put in place, policy put in place that would allow uh, proper law enforcement to come in and take action if they deem that individual um, exactly. you know, a threat. Now, uh, some uh, weren't quite as controversial necessarily. Uh, one bill uh, to ban armor-piercing bullets, which are already prohibited generally in New Jersey, passed with zero no votes uh, after the state attorney general explained that they wanted to uh, better line up state law with federal law. And effectively what it was is they added one additional type of ammunition to the banned list. And uh, this is important to highlight, both because these are the sorts of types of ammunition that should definitely be banned, but also... Um, when we talk about different forms of gun control, very often gun rights advocates will say, well, like, you're, you're defining these classes of weapon in a way that, well, wh what if you change this type of thing or you take this scope off or something like that? And that is a great concern. And legislation can be updated. If, if it's not quite doing what it needs to do, you can add new types of ammunition or take them off or vice versa and things like that in the future. They're doing that here. shows how easy it is. Uh, another bill lowered the limit for magazine rounds from 15 to 10, although there was one type of uh, 22 caliber firearm that had an exception. Uh, 22 caliber is a relatively small round used for like target shooting because ammunition is very cheap and also for like hunting small animals and things like that. Um, not the type of weapon necessarily that is used in a lot of mass shootings. But overall, it does limit the magazine size, which is uh, progress.
Uh, another uh, required background checks for private gun sales. Boom. And boom. That's a, that's also incredibly important. Yes. yes. That's, yeah. a, that's a big update to gun control policy. And look, it, it makes me sad that right now action is being taken on a state by state level. Uh, Florida, for instance, did pass uh, some gun control legislation. Uh, but I would like to see this on a federal level because yeah. people could easily drive across state lines and, and purchase weapons, you know, without uh, the, the limitations that they're experiencing in their own states. Yeah, 100 percent. And it's never made sense to me that if you're going to so you have uh, gun sales out of stores and then you have private gun sales, if you were only going to have background checks in one of the two, how did it end up that the private gun sales are the ones without it? Right. Like you have some guy who sells guns all day long. He deals with a lot of people. He could probably pick up on a creepo a little bit easier. Some random guy is supposed to personally determine if he should sell this gun to someone. No, there should obviously be background checks. Exactly. And when it comes to private sales, remember, you're talking about one party that is looking to, you know, get rid of a gun and make some money. They, yeah. they have an incentive to sell that gun. They want the money. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and it's easy for me to say, well, why would anyone be against this? But that's, it's a myth. People are not against this. Something like 90 plus percent of America is for this. It should already be law across the country. It is BS that we have to fight for in this particular fashion. Um, and so those are your six. And uh, as uh, Anna alluded to, the bills will now go to the Democrat-led Senate, uh, where the president of the Senate says that it is likely to pass, and the governor uh, supports all of them. This is a reminder that, again, party control of senates and assemblies matters certainly the party control of governorship matters because many of these bills would not become law if chris christie was still uh, running new jersey so these sorts of things matter in a very real way can i read one quote by the way so this is from uh, one of the republicans in the assembly who does not support this um so understand that this quote this is a recent quote this is from just yesterday and this is after you know parkland this is after manley bay this is after this huge movement the marches have happened and uh, Assemblyman Harold Wirths says, they're just feel-good politicians that are trying to get headlines and use a horrible tragedy. When I first ran for assembly, I told people they were coming for your guns. Remember, we, we broke down all six of those. They're not coming for your guns unless you pose an imminent threat to yourself or others. Uh, the ultimate goal of many of these people, if they had a magic wand, would be to take every firearm away from you. Don't believe the rhetoric that they say, we're for law-abiding citizens, we're for hunting. That's pure BS. But we told you what all six of the bills are, and you right. can see for yourself, what are they doing? Are they doing sensible gun control that still allows people to hunt and protect themselves? Or are they taking every gun? You can decide for yourself. They love to use uh, the slippery slope argument when it comes to gun control, even mm -hmm. though the slippery slope argument is a ridiculous argument when it comes to pretty much any other policy. Mm -hmm. um, and it, this is not a slippery slope. Again, we have constitutional protections. We have the right to bear arms. We just have to ensure that we don't allow uh, people who have no business owning lethal weapons to go out there and purchase those lethal weapons. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, it will now go to the Senate and then the, uh, the governor is likely to pass. So there is some progress, at least in New Jersey, coming out of this movement. If you like this video, bless your heart. We got a lot more where that came from. We do a full show every day, Monday through Friday. Come enjoy it ad free by becoming a member, tytnetwork.com slash join.